Okay, here we are. Here we are. This is the defiance. Defiance. Deviant tactical barrel work. Okay, so as always, we've got the barrel installed in the lathe, four jaw chuck at the breech end, uh, four jaw spider in the back end. Cool, so let's get our parting tool. Remove handle. And we're just going to take the thin little sliver off of this. Hmm. Make sure everything's locked down good. Easy does it. Easy does it now. Hard part of the steel there. Ooh, it's steady. Stop it. Yeah, I got kind of a lot sticking out here. Not exactly the most rigid setup here. Sorry. Right. Take a little longer. Pretty constant flow of oil on this thing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, that's part of Now we're going to switch out, uh, face that off clean, and then uh, re uh, center it if we have to. But uh, yeah, there's the very thin sliver. That's what's nice about parting tools. They, you know, you get real nice, clean, skinny, thin slices if you want so yeah we'll set that aside and be sure to get that back to the customer when we deliver the rifle okay get a facing tool out Do not drop it this time okay well walk in and then I'm going to put a little dicum so we can lay out our length. While that dries, we will face face off this little nub. And turn on power feed. <clears throat> Face that off clean. Very nice. 
And we're just gonna chamfer that uh, bore, <clears throat> just so we're not struggling getting the range rod in there. And just a light kiss of the of that. Okay, uh, we'll blow it out. Set this back up. <clears throat> My catch box for the oil that likes to splash everywhere. Okay, so here is where we will figure out our bushings. Okay, so here's the point <clears throat> where we will select a bushing that best fits the bore. Now, this is a range rod, uh, 6.5 millimeter, and it has these pilots, these bushings, which are used for range rods or reamers or other cutters that follow a bore, uh, especially in rifle building. So we've got, I'm just gonna put the bushing that came on the range rod back in the range rod's case. And now we will go through and select the best fit. So what we got here is a whole bunch of bushings that are incrementally sized uh, from 2552 all the way up to 2568, I believe. Was the highest? Yep. So we got what? Uh, nine bushings here. So 2560 is nominal. We could start with that one and see if that fits. I usually start there and then work my way up or down depending on the fit or the feel. All right, so that just simply screws into the end with a little slotted screw. The idea is we're just gonna feed it in the bore if it even goes. So we're a little snug here. Yep, that's, well, may have been the stress of uh, the parting tool kind of just constricting just that very first section. Because as I get past that, it actually feels good. That might be the one, actually. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll try one size up, but I'm pretty sure that's the ticket right there, which is actually cool because it's nominal. So we want 2562. Okay, so we got a 2562 bushing. Just got to get past that. Nope, that's too tight. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm forcing it in. Okay. So, yeah, that's definitely a little too tight. I'm just going to push it out with a cleaning rod here real quick. Maybe. We don't want to damage these things. Two, five, six, right on the money. Go back in. Yeah, that's a nice fit. All right. So, yeah, move just a little bit. Go to the high side. And in this case, go to the low side and loosen just a bit. High side. Low side. So I'm getting a little on the tight side with the chuck. I'm actually going to go to the low and just slightly loosen and then tighten back into back to where I want to be. Hi there. Okay, a little high here. There we go. Couple tents, if that. There we go. So that's centered perfectly. We'll check the back too. Okay, now the barrel is completely centered, both ends, um, perfectly. So I'm going to lay out my thread tenon length, which we calculated was, where are we at here? Nine, 59. 
959,000. Excuse me, blank. 959. <clears throat> right there. I'm going to switch my feed to a little faster. LCS8W. LCS8W. Lima, Charlie, Sierra, Ocho, Whiskey. Now we're going to set a zero for the end of our travel. We have a little to finish. Dial in some depth and take a cut. About twenty five thousandths per pass. This is a shallow cut and carbide, so we really don't need blue at this stage. And our diameter we're shooting for is 1.062. One point zero six two. I know we're not there yet, but I like to measure just to see where we're at. Just to see where we're at. So I'm gonna get my one to two inch micrometer out. One point one three two. So yeah, we got a little ways to go. All right, that should be 50 thousandths off. Should leave us about 1.08 something. Yep. 1.078. Yeah, 1.078. So we'll take 10 thousandths this pass. Take a clean up pass. <clears throat> So we're not overshooting anything. That's quite a bit of a cleanup pass, wow. All righty. Clean off the microscopic dust. Let's see what we got here. 1.065, 6, so 1.065 and a half. We're looking for 1.062. So let's take three or four. We can go undersized slightly. One, two, 
three. Let's see how that does. A little more than three thousandths. It's okay. Okay, see where we're at here. <clears throat> that should be it. Nope, not quite. 1.063 and a half. Wow, that looked like way more than three thousandths. Not way more, but more. Okay, fine. Take another pass. One and a half thousandths. <clears throat> nice surface finish with these carbide cutters. I use AR Warner. Clean off my anvil. There we go. One point oh six one nine five. So we're slightly undersized. One point oh six one eight oh. Sure you can see that or not, but one point. Zero six one eight zero. That is pretty much perfect. Okay, so we've got our diameter established. Our length is almost there. We will uh, machine the length after the threads are cut for a couple reasons. So we're done with this cutter. Let's get the threading tool installed. Make sure we got clearance for everything. Yeah, compound is set. Properly at the right angle, the correct angle. The machine needs to be set and stuff. So let's slow it down just a little bit and change it for 16 thread print. 16, that's going to be Lima Bravo Sierra 1 Victor. <laughs> Lima, Bravo, Sierra, Uno, Victor. Just make sure we're not screwing ourselves. We'll just make sure and measure the threads per inch to ensure that we're cutting 16. Okay, so I'd like to chant for the end of this real quick. Let's give it a good little tramp. Little chant for there. Okay. We're gonna set up our threading. Okay, I'm just zeroing out my cross slide and my compound rest. So I know how close I'm getting to my double depth and everything like that. Go to zero on each axis and take a pass. That looks right, but. Let's check. Sixteen. Yes, three. That's sixteen. Okay, good to go. Just continue threading this until we're deep enough for the receiver to fit. I 
And so as I was explaining, there's no need for a relief cut in the back because there's plenty of relief built into the receiver. So yeah, we don't have to worry about anything like that. No recoil we'll have to worry about. All that fun stuff. Looks better too. And then, you know, pushing the chamber back another turn is very easily achievable. Double depth is about 45 thousandths. So we're about halfway. Still see some die come left, so we're not there yet. About 36 right here. Be 40. Okay, I'm sure we're quite a ways off, but I just want to check things here real quick. Red per inch is fine. And uh, I'm sure we still got to take a little more out, but never hurts to try. Grab this defiance. And it's starting to grab right there, but yeah, we're way off. A couple more passes, check again. Now we're going one thousandths at a time. So, so one more pass and check it again. This will be 47. You'll see blue on the tops, although, oh, that's a nice fit so far. Okay, well, that's right there snug enough. I'm gonna do a cleanup, or a ghost pass. And right, let's do a half a thousand steps. Half thousandths depth. Nothing. Another half thousandths. There we go. Okay, cleaned up that very last thread. Blow it off, and I'm going to put some uh, anti seize on there. Just as a precaution. Certainly don't want anything seizing on us here. Yeah, I know that's a little more than I needed, but whatever. Oh man, that is a nice fit. Little tight. Let's see how far we can go. We may just need to burnish down the tops. It's taking two hands now, so yeah, it's a little tight. So let's give it a little more clearance. Yeah, that's a little too tight. Okay.
All right, so let's take a clean up. Just no, no in feed. Just see if, see if we actually clean anything up on this. Let's go straight in with the uh, cross slide 1000s. No additional feed on the uh, compound rest. Yep. Yep, it lifted the chip. So, yeah, one more one more pass. Clean up. True clean up. Zero. Zero cuts. Nothing. Yeah, there's a little bit. A little bit came off there. Okay, let's check that. I bet you that's the ticket right there. Yep, that's feeling even better. I mean, that is just silky. Silky smooth. It's a little snug, but I can still get it on one-handed all the way to the shoulder. And as I screw in and out, it's going to loosen up over time. But nothing. No no wiggle. There's I mean you got to you got to have a little clearance to get the dang thing on, but you know. Nothing. All right, great. Threading operation is complete. Now we will uh, machine that shoulder square and get the uh, length for our uh, thread tendon, which was 959, I believe. Check. 959, yes. So I'm zeroing out cross slide on the uncut portion of the threads. And then on the shoulder, install my ARO. And let's take like four thousands here just to give us something to measure off of. Spin it up, take a cut, take a pass. Now you'll see that dicum disappear. Nine fifty nine, right there. Okay, nine fifty nine. So we got our length now. Um, next thing I'm going to do is check our shoulder. Just make sure there's no light gaps. We got hundred percent contact. All that good stuff. Yeah, nice hard wall right there. Where's my bolt? Here it is. Okay, I'm just going to use this as an additional kind of a torquer, torquing, torque wrench. <laughs> yeah, that is a hard, hard stop. Let's see here. Any light going on here? Nope. Nope. Let's spin it 90 degrees. Check this. It's fine. Looks fine. Okay. I know now we've got 100% contact on the shoulder of the barrel to the torque shoulder face of the receiver. So we're going to unscrew this again. My goodness. You know, at the old shop on the shop fox, that little toy lathe. You know, I got pretty impressive threads, but this grizzly, this machine here, I mean, just beautiful looking and just the, they are silky smooth. It is just amazing. At the old shop on the, on the shop fox, 
You would actually, it, it was very strange visually. How, I can't describe it very well, but um, it'd, be, it'd be like there's high and low spots on the, on the crests. It, very, very strange. I, I'm using the exact same cutter. You know, those are my personal cutters, so it wasn't that. And even Gordy, when he was out there several years ago, commented on that and never really did figure out why I did that. Uh, don't get me wrong, the rifles I built on that, that lathe all shoot amazing. I mean, it helped build my reputation on that thing, so I'm not poo-pooing on the shot fox, but I am glorifying the grizzly. Like, I just, I've been nothing but happy with this machine. I just can, cannot express that enough. It was a huge chunk of change, but man, it is a champion. So, anyway, let me see if I got a cutter for this uh, bolt nose recess. I have a bolt nose recess cutter for 6.5 millimeter. So, this is just, I uh, needs a pilot, but uh, just going to cut that feature so the bolt can close. GTR reamer holder. Okay, now to set this up. Need to adjust these thumb screws to get the thing pointing into the bore proper, like that. Okay, that's all good. Let's get our carriage unlocked so I can move it, and then use this as a stop. back off just a bit and then I'm gonna set up a travel indicator so I can see how deep I'm going okay we're going into the bore perfect straight let's just set a zero right there zero that Oil it. Gouging up the rifling, even though all that's going to get cut out anyway. Okay, so this tool has a little trough. I like to just fill that up with oil. And then as it starts, right there, we'll make sure we're on zero. And then just cut her down to depth. So you can see the benefits of this cutter. Um, I believe there's a few rigs that I've done on this lathe with the uh, the other method, the manual method, using the co uh, compound uh, cross slide in the saddle. So you basically single point cut this. Going into the bore, cutting out, kind of like I did, uh, well, I was going to say like I did on the muzzle, but that was a different gun. Like a recess crown. A lot like a recessed crown. But this is the uh, 705 diameter you want, and then obviously you just feed it into depth and uh, one shot and you're done. Very, it's a luxury tool for sure, it's not necessary. It's just good for efficiency for sure. I've used this thing damn now, damn near hundreds of times, I'm sure by now. <clears throat> and it just uh, keeps cutting like a champ. Sure, it'll be need to be resharpened eventually, but uh, as you can see, I respect my tooling, so shouldn't be too bad. And obviously, it's cutting without any problems. So there's 150. I'm going to stop there and measure. We got 151. Nice. 
So let me check my spec sheet here. One, 55, right? Okay. Four more thousands. Clean off the cutter. Don't want to be pushing all that crap into the bore. Okay, there we are up against the carriage. And we stop to 150. So we'll carefully go in and cut that four thousandths out. 155. Precision, baby. 155. All right. Now, the ultimate test is actually screwing it back on. Make sure it closes. The bolt, that is. Bolt and receiver. Okay, so we're going to screw it all the way in, give it a little bump, and make sure the bolt closes and has a little bit of wiggle. Wiggle in terms of this. So that's actually quite a bit. That's a healthy wiggle there. We don't quite need that much. This is clearance. Okay, we're tight. Now it closes, and it's got it wiggle. So yeah, there you go. Now if this didn't wiggle at all, that would mean the bolt nose is up against the, uh, the barrel. And we don't want that. We need some clearance to allow, you know, especially out here in high desert Wyoming, it's uh, very dusty, and uh, competitions are held in the dry ass uh, summertime. So, you know, the guy's sitting there waiting for his uh, his round to come up. Probably has his bolt open. Wind's ripping through. Dust is going in there. Goes the chamber around, and oh no, he can't close his bolt, and it's all gravelly. <laughs> so this ensures that you know there's clearance in there for the the bolt to work. Now, that being said, once the headspace is achieved and the cartridge is in the chamber, there will be no wiggle because we don't want we don't want it for that. So that completes that operation. Uh, so next uh, next thing in the order of operations is going to be the chamber work. So we, as always, pre-drill. In fact. Back up so we'll check alignment, adjust if necessary, pre drill, bore. I'm gonna have to get a new boring tool, of course, but uh, bore it and then use the chambering reamer to finish the chamber. So we're gonna have to uh, change setups again and whatnot. And I think I gotta go do some running around, so I might just wrap this up for today and, and do the rest of this tomorrow. Kind of depends on what time it is. So I'll check the time and all that stuff. So regardless, we'll be back before the uh, chamber work.